I saw this on TikTok and it got me thinking. From about three years of reading research papers, producing content and talking to experts, there is undeniably a trend towards women preferring more masculine looking men, if possible. If possible being the key word here. By now, it is also strongly accepted that contraceptive hormones do change a woman's preferences in men. And when I say preferences, it is only usually by one characteristic, sexual dimorphism. Here's an example. Both are handsome men, excellent facial development, lean, symmetric, what have you. The difference is that one is more effeminate looking than the other, more androgynous. As a new viewer, you might not be able to explain exactly why one looks more feminine than the other, but you might guess it's because that their hair is giving them a more feminine or masculine look, but the details are actually all there. Much like how an artist has to train their eye, and I recommend you watch these earlier playlists to understand feminine and masculine characteristics. One has a more obtuse jaw angle, which is similar to that of a woman's. The other is more square and acute. One has a narrower jaw width. The other is wider. One has a juvenile hairline. The other is matured with frontotemporal recession or hairline recession. As humans, we often associate neoteny or looking youthful with femininity and signs of aging with masculinity. With age, male sex hormones indirectly influence hair loss, and so this is a characteristic sign of masculinity. Women don't have the same hormones, and so they don't lose their hair as much, having a hairline more like this. Just note that although being bald is a masculinizing feature, that doesn't necessarily make it the most preferred for physical aesthetics due to a preference for younger fathers with healthier seeds. So there is a logical explanation I hope you can appreciate to why each and every facial feature can be divided into masculine, feminine or both. And over three years, we've covered most of them through the clinical research. We made a video on all of it. You can just check that out for yourself. But this is called sexual dimorphism. And getting back on track to answering the question, both old and recent research papers suggest that women on birth control prefer more of this and women off birth control prefer more of this. Also, there are differences during the menstrual cycle where a higher risk of pregnancy is associated with the preference for masculine looking men. All of which is tying back to the good genes hypothesis that Kobe and colleagues go as far as to say that masculine faced men are thought to possess good genes and to be healthier than relatively feminine faced men, where it's thought that the faces with high masculinity have stronger genes and better immune systems because they can resist the negative effects of testosterone. Simon Groom, our evolutionary biologist, has a podcast episode on this exact topic. There's going to be a lot of podcast episodes and a lot of books I'm going to throw at you, so just make a list. If you want to learn more about how hormones influence facial preferences, then you should read This Is Your Brain on Birth Control by Sarah Hill. All right, so let's recap everything so far. This is a feminine looking face. This is a masculine looking one. We know because there are many indicators of what's known as testosterone ornamentation, as the biologists call it, or aka masculine features, than the other face. Women have repeatedly shown a preference for greater masculinity when they are at their most fertile. Just a side note though, before getting to a work relationship for all the women out there, you should probably test your preferences on and off birth control before you make any big decisions. The comment section of this TikTok was pretty eye-opening as a man, at least. And so this implies a general trend towards masculine features as being the norm. Without artificial intervention, biology dictates that this is preferred. And considering the harmful side effects of testosterone, it makes a lot of sense as to why women would choose the strongest survivors, those with the most masculine facial features. Then the question is, do all women prefer masculine looking men compensate if they cannot secure one? We see this behavior in a lot of dating scenarios. In the most recent video, I explained what's known as the fear of dying alone hypothesis, which comes from a podcast episode actually, cognitive dissonance, which comes from another video, and matching hypothesis, which comes from a whole playlist of videos. Like I said, we've covered almost everything at this point, so just Google it. <laughs> Basically saying that we want the fittest biologically compatible male, but we'll compensate if we cannot find them, and even convince ourselves that we didn't really downgrade just to live a happy life, which is, after all, cognitive dissonance. Doherty and colleagues 2020 proposed that men displaying more masculine physical characteristics are more likely to be healthy, physically strong, and be able to compete for resources, but also less likely to invest time and effort into their mates and offspring. This is significant because a lot of previous research has shown that more masculine looking bad boys, quote unquote, are preferred for the short term but make bad long-term partners because they always leave. Again, podcast episode for full details. If they didn't leave, however, would women still prefer more homely-looking but fatherly long-term partners? 
is the choice of a softer faced, long term partner an example of compensating for what you desire but cannot have? Trade off theory suggests that women actively consider in a heterosexual relationship the pros and cons of a male partner for the long term. Stronger genetic quality, perhaps they're stronger, bigger, faster, smarter, handsome, and so forth compared to the cost of the man leaving when they're most vulnerable, which is generally pregnancy. But here's the kicker, attractive women are theorized by Doherty 2020 to prefer the most masculine men because they know that if the man leaves, they can easily find a replacement or even the man might not leave at all because they're physically attractive. This implies that men do value women by their physical attractiveness quite highly, enough to go against their polyamorous nature. It is a harsh reality after all, but as we've covered in the past, again with the clinical research, men care most about visual looks and health indicators. Whether they're scientifically proven or not doesn't really matter, like blush or redness, that kind of thing. While women evaluate men more holistically, more as a lifestyle choice rather than purely by looks. However, men are more lenient with their standards, women are more strict. And this mainly has to do with the investment women have to make if they get pregnant. So there's pros and cons to both. Mattress et al. used 27,000 women, De Bruyne with 1,000, both to test this theory and found that women who rated themselves higher showed stronger preferences for male facial masculinity. Vukovic found a similar trend for lower pitched voices, while Smith found a similar trend for women with attractive waist to hip ratios, all of which choosing more masculine men. O'Connor showed that women rated more attractive, by others also preferred masculine men. But on the other hand, Zeitz and Pentenboek were unable to replicate the same effects. So it's really hard to say for sure because there's contradicting research here. And this is where we come to Doherty's paper, which tries to answer this question once and for all using 9,000 women and basically found that attractive women had slightly stronger preferences for masculine men in the short term context. And we've already known this. This is not a new Finding this is very much just supporting what we've already known. Funnily enough though, attractive women also preferred more feminine faces for other women, suggesting that this preference of facial dimorphism for attractive women also extends to same-sex faces. It's more like a way of thinking for them when you become attractive, you want men who look like men, women who look like women, and why that is, I suppose, I don't really know. So what can we take away from this for our practical lives? For one, the author suggests that a woman's self-rating, how she perceives herself and her self-esteem, are better indicators of her preferences for masculine men. This was previously tested by exposing women to faces of people less attractive than them to artificially boost their self-esteem and then showing them all these men, which I think is a pretty, pretty funny way of um, showing you how self-esteem is more or less influenced by those around you. This is called sociometer theory. We have a full article on this, so you should check that out as well. And the data itself, I would personally say that the data is not convincing enough, at least for me, to answer this video's question that attractive women do prefer more masculine men because there is just too much co-founding contradiction. There is a lot of conflicting research and Doherty's own paper was unable to replicate the exact trend that we're trying to answer. And what I actually think is that it could be that other than the face, there's something else that's added that explains the trends that the other research papers saw like larger bodies, deeper voices that come with a masculine face. And that's also what Doherty came to the conclusion of. However, if we look at this from a purely social point of view, masculine faces are quite a big benefit because they are tied to feelings of dominance, aggression, and strength. And even without the actual benefits of attracting more beautiful women, it's still useful to work on for increasing facial masculinity because it reduces intrasexual competition. Basically, you gain the respect of other men because you look scary and they're not going to mess with you on the street. That's a pretty big benefit to have. In the past, we've covered many ways of increasing facial masculinity. There's an exact video on this topic. If you want more specific advice based on your specific features, then you can order a Coop's assessment and have our doctors and dentists take a look at your face and basically give you specific feedback for your situation. All of that is over at the Coop's website. You can check that out as well.